everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mark Talks Football. And today we're going to review the news that has been happening over the past few days. But before we get into that, there is a quick update. Vlogs might be a bit of an issue. Uh, the software I use for vlogging or the way that I do my vlogs, um, there was a massive problem over the weekend. Um, and I really struggled to get that done. So I do apologize. I'm going to try something a little bit different um this weekend to see if we can but i'm going to try and fix that as quickly as i can so i do apologize if anything coming forward i am recording this the day the night after the derby game so i've watched it and i'm gonna put my feelings across to that in a bit but before we get into that what i did on saturday is i made a tactical video um, did a breakdown of the Wickham game. It's a quick five minute video. Um, a quick five minute video. That thing. Um, but in this video, it was very much me explaining how I feel like Wickham did what they did and what went wrong for us. So, what I'm going to do now before we get into the news or anything that's going on, I'm now going to cut to myself from Saturday to explain the situation where I felt Wickham did well. And what we did wrong. Right, so here we go. Here is the tactics board, and here is how both teams laid out. This is this is Wimbledon. This is Reading. One of the main tactics I saw, and what I felt during that first half, was when Reading didn't have the ball. If you look down the wing here, if we go to one side, and what they did very clever, uh, Wimbled, um, Wickham, sorry, is they overloaded it. So what that meant was that the players over here, around here, couldn't go forward because they were literally sucking them in and making sure that Mola, the left back, let's say that's left back for the time being because that's where they predominantly went down the first half. Mola couldn't go. Kelvin had to come back. And what Kelvin didn't do is when he had the opportunities to push forward to go forward. Perfect example of how to nullify Reddin's way of playing out from the back and using the um the the wing play that we've been playing this season that is probably the perfect way to sort of explain it they nullified one side they targeted it and that's what we did well we did well in the second half to counteract that um moving forward but the one thing wickham didn't do the second half was this um and push them back because kelvin then come off uh, and Kelvin's not good enough at the moment. Um, I'm not buying that he's good enough to start. I don't think he should be starting. I think Button needs to come out as well. Um, and I think Craig um, needs to come out as well. Savage was so much better, um, is so much better than what Craig is. Craig is a very good player if we're playing defensive. But when you're trying to go forward and trying to do stuff, he is not. Um, and I thought as well, the goalkeeper... He, time wasting central he was um, but he took a school and the leaf out of Joe Lumley when we had him and did it did the way I think first half tactically for Wickham was good um, was very good from them the issue that I found for Wickham was they should have been at least three four goals up and they were so that gave us an opening and one of the things that Redden did the second half was push these back. Back into their positions. Back you go, right? And that's what I felt Redden did really, really well. They pushed down this wing here. Yeardham come up as well. Then you had wing coming across like he normally does when he gets the ball. Sprays it around Savage. Play in this area here where he needed to be to go. Nibs was a lot higher up, roaming around here, trying to look for the run, trying to find places to go. And I thought that that was the right thing to do. And I thought, tactically, that was correct of how it went. Um, and everything else that went with it. And then just pinning. Then it comes to the penalty. Um, blatant penalty. Stonewall penalty. They deserve, they they got the penalty. Mola, I don't know what went through his head, just decided to dive inside of his box. They get the penalty. They get the goal. And they win the game. Knock all the confidence out of the Reading players. Uh, that's two losses in a row now at home. Uh, and simply is not good enough for us at the moment. We are five points clear of the relegation zone. But they're the... 
the team that are in the relegation zone do have a game in hand. So that is a bit of an issue. We need them to lose that game in hand to help us, but they don't. But, but, but we have to wait and see to see what happens. But overall, very, very dis disappointing performance. Not much else to pick up from there. No individual brilliance. Femi Aziz did extremely well. Really got Femi Aziz into the game, getting into it. And using him down that wing with Yeardon was the perfect way of what Reading do really, really well. Defensively, again, another mishap from the left back. I think for the, for the next game, if I'm personal, this is personally for me, Mola needs to come out, Button needs to come out, and Kelvin needs to come out. I would pick anyone left back. I would put Kelvin, Abafua, Abafia, um, that would play right back, shove Yeardum left back. And then what you can then do as well at the same time is... Not only that, you could put Ben White, uh, Ben White, I've just seen him on the screen, that's why. Uh, ben Elliott um, on the wing, who played really well when he came on um, with Kelvin as well. Um, did extremely, extremely well, um, Ben White, when he came on, I thought. And I think I'll take Craig out as well for Savage to start in the next game. That's my personal preferences. That's what I think. Um, but who knows what we're going to happen and who knows what's going to okay. happen. Okay, as you can see, I did a nice little breakdown there on it. Um, and... There was a lot that went wrong. I was very... Im okay, personal opinion. This is my personal opinion. You can agree or disagree with this as much as you want. You may not like it. That's up to you. But I personally felt it was embarrassing that we're clapping off a player that we're playing against. If they we're, were a club legend, 100%. But he was a servant, not a legend. He was not an amazing player. We never won promotion. We never we got never did it. We got to a playoff final, I think, with him, and he scored that goal at Wembley in the FA Cup. But still, we lost the match. So, to me, I didn't like that at all. Okay, personal opinion, I didn't like that at all. I felt it was wrong. Um, but that's my personal thing. I don't like that person at all. That's mine. That's me. You can like it or lump it. That's basically how I feel about that. But let's get into some of the news before we get into uh, the Derby game. Let's get into some news. So here's the first piece of news we've got. So the first piece of news is, is that the head of commercial for Reading FC, um, Tim Kilpatrick, um, is looking for sponsorship for the sleeve sponsor, Peruta, Pitch side LED uh, tactic advertising, big screen advertising, digital sponsors, all for until the end of the season. That is his job, and that is the problem. We have to raise one million pounds from now to the end of March. If we do not, we could be severely fucked, and that would mean League Two football next year. That could also mean no more Reading Football Club. So. My, my thing here is I'm trying to use this platform as much as I can. I'm not well known. I'm not massively out there. I've got 380 something subscribers. I'm not big, but there are people that watch this. There are people that may be able to help. So if you are some of those people that are watching this and you have your dad, your mum, your granddad, your sister, your auntie, your uncle, your grandparents, your third cousin, second cousin, first cousin, fourth cousin 50 times removed and you know someone that could be a possibility of have some important bit of money that could do help us with this club then do i do know that there is someone uh, that's got a gofundme so you can donate so people can buy more tickets and then sell it off or then go for free or give it out hand it out i don't know what they're doing but they're going to try and get that ticket merchandise up so that we can get more people into the ground to watch Reddit. The other thing that we, I also have done as well, I have taken the opportunity to buy, I buy tickets as well as my season ticket, um, but I also brought my kids' um, kits for the forum. Brought myself that, that, I can't ever do the opposite of this, that scarf as well that I brought. Um, £15, by the way, for a scarf. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that is what we're trying to, that, that's what we need to do. If you know anyone, please help us get the word out 
and for us to try and do this differently than what we're doing before okay and we just need to do that as much as we can another piece of news that come out during the reading game and it was from eddie um eddie has come out and said that there is perspective people that are trying to buy the football club now you've got to take this with a pinch of salt this is something that could possibly go wrong or something that could possibly go right we have no idea so with that being said let me hand you over to twitter i'm just trying to get it sorted for you um hand me over to twitter so as he understands there is a saudi slash american owned company interested in buying reading football club i'm also told they had representatives attend games i will not and uh, discourage posting any specific detail please take this tweet as it is i haven't specific um uh, i haven't specific specified that talks are at any particular stage do not take this as reading are getting saudi owners do not get too excited deals can fall through in minutes I am just sharing what I'm told. Do not rest your hopes on this tweet. Um, and then Reddin scored as he posted that. But Saudi base, um, I know by the internet and I know by what I see that Saudi investment would turn fans away. And I get it. There are people on the internet that do not want this to happen. I understand it. But can we be picky? That's the question I want to ask. If, so the question I want down, down in the comments down below. If Reading get a Saudi owner, will that turn you away from Reading Football Club? Or will you deal with it for the time being? Until a point where they can sell. Or would you be happy to have a Saudi owner to have it? I want to know in the in the comments down below. I want you guys to tell me how you felt, how you would feel about prospective Saudi owners. We're not saying it's happening. We don't know if it's any close to actually happening at all. But this is a question that I need to ask you. Saudi Arabia. Saudi and America. What are the other options? So in in my mind, I get those people that do not want Saudi owners. Okay, I understand it. Me personally, I would I wouldn't mind it because they have money. And if you're going Saudi in America, you know you've got money, but they're going to have to pass checks. Um, who knows what's going to happen? This could be a complete hoax trying to um, tell the prospective people to hurry up to try and get things done quicker. Who knows what's going on? This could just be a ploy for something else. Who knows? This is not something, as he said, that could happen. But what do you guys think? That's the question of the day. What do you guys think? Now, Derby game. I've got a clip. Um, I want to thank, um, what's his name, uh, Blobby, Mr. Blobby, love the name by the way, used to watch him when I was growing up, now let's watch this clip, so to that, to that naked eye, that's a penalty, sped up, penalty, now watch closely, he handballs the fucker, handballs it, no penalty, but that is somehow still deemed a penalty in the EFL. And Ball dives away, and he even Pereira is saying penalty. Now, Pereira should be starting in goal from the right till now to the end of the season, in my opinion. Um, but again, the EFL. See, this is the thing, right? I don't want to say this because it will make me look bitter, right? 
but it gets to a point where when you watch something for so long and you see it things happening um then it get cheating is involved at this point right i didn't want to come off bitter i have now um but cheating is involved because how in the lord's name because of this as well right so their goal was also offside but we're not going to get into that but this is a this is a second yellow card okay so i'm going to mute this because i know i'm going to get in trouble somehow Okay, so we're going to go back, frame by frame. At what point does he get touched? At what point? All right, let's mute this. Pause it. Let's go frame by frame. No one near him. He's moved his leg back. Hasn't touched him. And he's taken a step and then fallen down. Like, it's not Derby's fault. It's the croc that's in the middle. But the referee won the game for Derby tonight by giving them a penalty. I think it was a penalty. I don't know. It's, yeah, the penalty. We just talked about it. Um, and that. I, I don't, the thing, it feels like to me as a Reddit fan watching on that they're blatantly doing this to fuck with us. Now, that's probably not the case, but to me, it feels like they are blatantly doing this to fuck with us. And that is the amount of worry I've got now to the end of the season. Um, because I don't, I, I don't know what else Reading can do. Ruben Sellers has done an absolute fantastic job with this team. Um, I won't have anyone who wants to say a bad word about him. I won't listen to you. Your 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 opinion is a crop if that's the thing that you're going with. Um, it's as simple as that. I'm not listening to the bollocks that will come out of your mouth if you think um, that's a good idea. If you think that that that's the thing, okay. To me, that makes your opinion irrelevant right so with that sending off and with sam smith scoring if we go and have a look over here now as well um we're going to look at the league table now um and see what it looks like now so as we go into the busy end of the period here cheltenham have two games in hand over us now Carlisle have a game in hand. Port Vale have two games in hand as well. If Port Vale win both, they still won't overtake us unless they have a massive goal swing. But if Cheltenham win both, they will. Which will then push, push Cambridge into the bottom four. But Cambridge have a game in hand. And if they win them, it will move Burton. And Burton have a game in hand. We... If Cheltenham win both, Cambridge and Burton win their game in hand and we don't beat Cheltenham, we will be in the bottom four. Plus the potential points deduction again for the unpaid or the, the scrounging of money that we're going for right now. It's becoming a bit worrisome, shall we say. And that's the issue we've got. We've got Cambridge coming up next. Um, and let's have a look at this, as you can see here. Cambridge haven't won a game in their last six. Um, they played today and got dick 6-0 by Lincoln. Fucking hell, I didn't expect that. But look at that. They have 13 shots compared to that 18, but they had nine on target of their four, but they got six bloody goals. So Saturday is a must win. Have to win it. Worst case scenario is a draw. Worst case scenario is a draw. 
I'm hoping Joel Pereira gets back in goal. I hope the changes, the three changes he made for the first half stay. We're going to have to have a new right back in. So I presume Mbugay is going to go right back. And Dorset will go centre back or Mola will have to go in centre back. It's just, it's just, it, it, you know when things are not just not going right and it just feels everything that we possibly could ask for is not going right at the wrong time. But we have to wait and see to see what happens. We have to just hope. So, please, if you can, go online, buy yourself a ticket, and come to the ground. But, who knows? That is the end of this video. I'm not going to get into the poison action. Because I think I've said everything over on TikTok. So make sure you go down in the description down below and you will find um, if there's if, 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 if there's breaking news, I will go straight on there. So make sure you go over there and follow. Um, just absolutely demoralized at the moment. I don't know what to do. Please help fund the club. Help us do something. Who knows? But with love of care, make sure you go and subscribe to all the other channels I've got. Make sure you stick around for more content. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Peace.